Hi folks, it's Coach Rich. <clears throat> Welcome to uh, another video slash podcast slash blog post. I'm going to do the video, strip out the audio, make the podcast, and then take my notes here and make it into a blog post. So um, so uh, today's topic is um, <clears throat> uh, giving you more details, encouraging you to um, resist the siren call, let's call it, of the of, of the winter epic training events and epic races. Okay. Um, today is January 23rd. Um, and I just, I just checked in the last 12 months, I've done over 2000 season plans for, for our athletes and our trials. Uh, we just finished a drive in uh, January, have a, a whole new a squad of people. So, so I've been doing season plans for those folks, been doing season plans for our athletes. And so, and so I've been deep, deep, deep in this into all kinds of season planning issues, okay? Um, what's becoming more and more common is this um, phenomenon of people signing up not only for fall and winter marathons, but also uh, running challenges, um, epic cycling weeks on a trainer. And basically, um, there's becoming a culture of um, you're supposed to be training your base in the winter, you're stuck indoors or your training opportunities um, uh, are very limited. So let's spice it up by giving ourselves um, an, ep an, an epic run challenge that finishes off with a marathon or a marathon is not enough. Let's, you know, let's uh, fly to Florida and do a half marathon on Saturday and a marathon on Sunday. Or let's put together a nine day epic suffer fest on our trainers. OK, um, I just want to give to you as a season planning guy, kind of some, what are, what are some implications and some pitfalls that, that go along uh, with that course of action? First of all, let me, um, let me set the stage for how we do folks with our team. Um, you, for us, you're going to have an out season, not an off season. Okay. The difference is you're going to finish finish your race season, you're going to have a brief, you know, maybe two or three weeks of unstructured training. And then rather you have, rather than have you take the winter off, you're going to take the winter out, meaning you're not in your in-season training plan. We're going to drop your volume uh, quite a bit. You're going to take that base. You're going to do hard, fast training so that we can leverage that base and make you a faster athlete. We make you faster between you know, October and, and, and April so that you enter October or April 2014 much faster than you were in, in April 2013. And then we put endurance on top of that, that faster you. Um, that's how we do business, okay? So if you've done your typical season of triathlon training, you already have a very good base, we're not going to let you take, you know, time off, air quotes. Rather, we're going to transition you from, from, from endurance training to get faster training, low volume, high intensity, reduce mental cost, and then we're going to put endurance on top of that faster you from, we start that between February and April with our team, okay? Um, <clears throat> therefore, winter is the time to drop your volume, give you two days off each week, and have you focused on nothing more than making yourself a, a faster 5K, 10K half marathon runner and 40K time trial cyclist, okay? So, but, but what happens is um, if, you, if you schedule yourself for uh, a, a winter marathon, a fall marathon, an early spring marathon, um, these running challenges that, that, that go, that, that, um, happen or these, or these epic indoor, uh, suffer fest, you know, training weeks on the bike. Um, there's a couple implications that happen that I see over and over and over again. One is <clears throat> if at some point you're likely going to have to switch over from our method of, 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 of training, which is, which is low, which is low volume, high intensity, make me faster. You're going to have to switch over towards a focus on building endurance, adding volume to your training 
in order to um, uh, prep yourself for whatever this epic training or racing activity is that you have planned. You switching over to that method of training comes at the opportunity cost of making yourself faster, okay? Because it's kind of a zero, it, uh, uh, it's a zero sum game. If you start increasing your volume to uh, prepare yourself for this epic training or racing event that you have, volume goes up, intensity goes down, and yes, you build your endurance, but you've missed what the greater opportunity is for the winner, which is to make yourself a faster athlete. Okay, so if 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 you registered for the Goofy Challenge or the I think it's called the Goofy Challenge, where you're doing a half marathon on on Saturday and a marathon on Sunday, that come you're going to have to do volume to get you ready for that. That volume comes at the opportunity cost of making yourself a much much faster athlete, and 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 so you enter. Um, February, March, April of 2014, not necessarily any faster than you were in 2013 because you haven't done that training that makes you faster. Okay. Same thing if you signed yourself up for an epic, epic cycling block in uh, February, um, you may start, uh, you know, doing higher volume trainer rides in uh, December and January that come at an opportunity cost of, of low volume, high intensity, lots of rest that makes you faster. Okay. That's so those are, those are the opportunity costs associated with, with the front end of those, of those types of, you know, epic training or racing opportunities on the back end is the, um, uh, is a time it takes you to bounce back from that. So, if, if you race a winter marathon, you're going to need, you know, that, that marathon is going to punch minimum of a two-week block, two- to three-week block in your training where you're, where you're going to have to dial, th dial, dial things down quite a bit so that you can rest and recover from that marathon effort. The same if you do a nine-day indoor epic cycling event. You're going to dig yourself a physical hole that you'll need to dig yourself out of on the back end, and and that comes at at that comes at the opportunity cost of being able to make yourself faster. So on the front end, you might have about four weeks of 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 compromise training on the front end. Compromise meaning a lost opportunity to make yourself faster, and then on the back end, you might have you know two or three weeks, and finally. The biggest cost of all this is the mental cost, okay? Um, if you're listening, you know, if you're watching this video, if you're listening to this podcast, if you're reading this blog post, all there's, it's, it's very likely that, you know, you are a long course triathlete, either half or full Ironman. And the nature of, of that sport, of this distance, is that we're having to uh, commit uh, to our race schedules months and months, even a year in advance. And so there's a tendency for athletes to think and think and think for months and months and months about the races that they're doing. Okay. So if you are doing Ironman Wisconsin 2014, your race isn't until September 7th, 2014. If if you are incurring the mental cost and you're spending that mental energy on these epic training events now in January or February, in my experience, that is simply money, that's mental energy, that's mental currency that you don't that that you won't be able to spend when it will be more useful to you, which is in July and August. Okay. I can't stress enough. As cool as long course triathlon is. As epic as it is, as neat as it is to say that you're training for and you're doing an, an, an Ironman distance race, you absolutely do not want to put yourself in a place where you, you are putting your feet on the floor at 5.30 in the morning thinking, thinking that you're training for an Ironman for months and months and months. You want to disassociate your, your head from that Ironman training for as long as possible Understanding that 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 training will exact a high 
mental cost and the and the mental currency that you spend early on in your season is currency that you're not that that you won't be able to spend closer to your race and in my experience you're simply putting yourself at a great great risk of mental burnout okay having said all this we are endurance athletes again if you're watching this video list you know uh, reading this blog post podcast whatever you have likely adopted um, you know triathlon and long course triathlon as an expression of your commitment to a fitness lifestyle what I mean by that is your lifestyle is you know how you do your thing is simply take taking your fitness and doing cool stuff with it and if you doing a fall marathon winter marathon epic training event ep epic racing event is just an expression of you doing cool stuff with your fitness I get that I understand that it doesn't always have to be about about taking the most direct most efficient path towards a race at the end of the day we all like to do cool stuff with our fitness all I'm saying is um, the better the the better time for you to make that investment and do that cool stuff is where it will do more good for you on race day which is closer to your race okay and then the next question is okay how close how close should I schedule stuff like this in our experience um, we we like to have our athletes if they are going to do some kind of epic training week epic training weekend we like to see it no closer to their race than about about three to four weeks out, and as I'm, you know, as I'm thinking of our long course training plans, um, five weeks out from race day, they have their first race rehearsal. Two weeks out from race day, they have their second race rehearsal. So from so in between those two race rehearsals, they have two weekends. Those two weekends are good opportunities for for epic training weeks. So um, so again. These epic training and racing weekend weekend opportunities in the winter have a high opportunity cost on the front end. The opportunity being a lost opportunity to make yourself faster through high volume, low intensity training. Understanding that in our world, you already have a base because you've spent uh, your 2013 season, you know, training and training and training, and you you are in your out season, not your off season, meaning you haven't taken a large chunk of time off there's the opportunity cost that happens on the back end of of you doing one of these one of these epic training or racing weekends and finally there's the tremendous mental cost that happens with you preparing for it the train the mental cost that you're going to spend when you do one of these epic epic training opportunities and that is simply mental currency that that in our experience you're not going to have to spend closer to your race when it, when it will do you more good. And if you are looking for an epic training opportunity closer to your race, the best time to do it is up until about five weeks out from your race. Okay. And I just want to, again, make the caveat of we all like to do epically cool shit with our fitness. And if, and, and, Often enough, if it doesn't make sense training wise, but it makes you happy and it just sounds like a fun thing to do, this is all just a game and we totally get that and we support you. Okay? Thanks, folks. Bye.